Hey everybody, my name is Anthony Macro and I'm a teaching assistant here at Ohio University for Human Anatomy 3010. And in this video, we're gonna be going over the intrinsic back muscles. We're gonna be talking origin, insertion, action, and exercises to stretch and strengthen these muscles. All right, so starting with the transversospinalis group, this is a group of three muscles and they are the deepest muscles in the back. There are three different muscles here. The shortest one is the rotators. The multifidus is the second shortest, and then the longest is the semispinalis. Now, the name transversospinalis gives away their origin and insertion. They're going to originate on the transverse process of a vertebrae, and it's going to insert on a spinous process above it. Now, a commonality between all these muscles is that they are all roof-shaped. So this means they are going to produce the exact same action. It is going to produce contralateral rotation when unilaterally contracted. So if you were to pull on this muscle, on the right rotators here, your trunk would rotate to the left. Hopefully not snapping the other one off. Okay, now isolating one side of a rotator on a vertebrae, you can see that when you pull on the right rotator, this is going to contralaterally rotate to the left. Let's do it. So when you pull and this right one contract, your trunk will rotate to the left. And then for bilateral contraction, they're both gonna pull at the same time and the trunk is going to move posteriorly into back extension. So, let's see there. Back extension when bilaterally contracted. Okay, so for the next group of muscles, these are your deep segmental muscles and you have two muscles here. You're gonna have the intertransversarii muscle in between the transverse processes. And here you're gonna have your inner spinalis, which as the name says, is in between the spinous processes. So the actions of these muscles, will start, start with the inner transversarii. This is gonna have a unilateral and a bilateral action. The unilateral action when you contract one inner transversarii is going to be lateral flexion. So if you were to contract this inner transversarii, you would laterally flex the trunk to the right. And the inner spinalis only has a unilateral contraction, but it has a primary and a secondary. The primary is to stabilize the vertebral column and the secondary would be back extension. Now going to the smaller model, we can see the inner transversarii. When this contracts, you're gonna see it laterally flex to the left. If you were to bilaterally contract your inner transversarii, you would get stabilization of the vertebral column. And if you go to your inner spinalis, you're gonna get stabilization of the vertebral column and back extension when it's flexed. Okay, so last but not least, we have your erector spinae muscles. These are your largest intrinsic back muscles. You have your iliocostalis, your longissimus, and your spinalis. And from lateral to medial, you have iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis. I love spaghetti, or if it's easier to understand, I love standing. These muscles are important because they are a huge cause of back pain. They're large muscles and they all have one common action of back extension. One exception to this is gonna be the iliocostalis when it's unilaterally contracted will laterally flex the trunk because it's the most lateral. So looking at the action in depth now, if you were to pull on the spinalis, you're going to extend the back and this is a common action between all of the erector spinae muscles. So bonus muscles here, we have your splenius capitis and your splenius cervicis. 
Now these are two muscles that are responsible for extending the neck. So if you were to contract either of these muscles, you're gonna go into neck extension. Now, what you may notice is that these muscles are V-shaped. And a special function about V-shaped muscles on the back is that they produce ipsilateral rotation when contracted. So if you were to contract your right splenius capitis, your head and neck are going to rotate to the right. So one way to strengthen your splenius is take a resistance band here, put it along the back of your head, right by your external occipital protuberance, and go into neck extension. And when that's contracting, that is your splenius capitis and your splenius cervicis extending the neck. So a way to stretch your splenius capitis and cervicis is something you probably do on a daily basis looking at your phone. Just simply going into head and neck flexion is one way to stretch both of these muscles. Thank you guys for watching. This has been your overview of the intrinsic back muscles.